Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is the beginning of Boys and Girls Clubs, Mr. County uh, Career slash College Fair. And um, we are blessed for to be joined today by um, just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person, uh, very knowledgeable uh, about education and all things as such. Um, Ms. Larkin, uh, she's the founder of 3L Educational Counseling, LLC, and uh, middle up, grade and middle grades uh, educator at Bakerton Community Charter School, where my son graduated from. Bakerton Blazer, go Blazers! No um, Blazers. <laughs> and uh, specifically, she focuses on the college readiness process by way of empowering students and family by integrate, integrating a multifaceted, hands-on approach for the 21st century learners which we need at this time so miss larkin listen i'm gonna let you take it over and um and i want you to go ahead and give us what you got okay no problem thank you again sir for this opportunity and uh again i, I have a heart for the boys and girls club uh, my son was a participant in the one here in albany and it definitely fortified and fostered him as a young man growing into uh, adulthood because the boys and girls club do an outstanding job and sometimes they have a thankless job because there are the they are the gatekeepers who who make that transition from young people leaving from their school and waiting on their parents to get off of work so they're more than a babysitter they are the ones who literally are the first line of defense to protect our children in our community. So hats always have always went to the Boys and Girls Club of America. And uh, so today we're gonna talk about um, how young people need to think about what they're gonna do with their life when it comes to furthering their education into higher education. So the first question, I always ask young people this, if the job that you want to do or the career that you want to pursue, does it require for you to go to college? And if the answer is yes, we're here to, to serve you. Even if the answer is no, we still can serve you because the key is skills and education because as our community, we need everything the skill set as far as, as well as the education. So the first question is, what do I want to do? What do I want to major in? So that's your what. How much time is it going to take? Do I need to go on to advance uh, college to get this skill? You know, so that's the first question. What do I want to do? And what is it going to take for me to gain that training and education? That's question one. What I want to major in. Second question is, where do I, do I want to pursue this? Am I going to go to school in my local community? Am I going to go to a community college? Am I going to go to a regional school, something within my county area, 14, 15 county area? That's what we call regional colleges. Or do I want to pursue this major university. So where your what your where is makes a big difference on how much is going to cost. And that is the third question, the cost. How much is it going to cost for you to receive the education and training for what you want to do? Okay? The first line of defense that I always tell students to do this is go to your parents, mom, dad, grandma, whoever is responsible for you, and ask them this fundamental question. Do I have money, say, have you put aside money for me, for me to pursue what I wanna do? Do we have a 529 or some type of college fund? And some people say, well, are, are most kids gonna know that question? Well, here's the thing that we have to do as a community. 
we have to teach our kids what questions to ask. You know, I help parents all the time when they're trying to figure out what's the best school for them. When they used to go on the tours before the pandemic happened. Some parents don't know what specific questions to ask. And that's why we do what we, what we do, is to specifically drill down on what you need to know. So again, start with your family resources first. Do we have money set aside? Did grandmama or granddaddy leave me an inheritance where we can add on to it? Or here's another thing <clears throat> that a lot of parents also do. If you own a home, you can start taking equity out of that home in order to finance your child's college education. A lot of parents who have their own home or who have access are able to do that, okay? So it's all about, as you can see, is back to resources. And so that's where the majority of what I do in my business, what we focus on, are the actual resources. So once you've had that question, that, that, that question answered by your parents, whether you're gonna take equity out of your home or there was some type of uh, savings put aside for your education, and then we start to start looking at the types of financial aid. But before we get to that, there is a clearinghouse in which most students have to do prior to starting college is called the FAFSA. And this is a form that is really not complicated, but it can be complicated if you've never done it before. So we assist families completing the FAFSA. A lot of the, a lot of the school, high schools, if your counselor has the time, most of the time they probably don't, but some schools offer workshops in order for you, for the student to do their part, and then the parent have to do their part. And basically it's a clearinghouse to look at your income and your resources to see how much money you're eligible for, okay? So that's very important to get that done and to get it done on time. And some people say, well, what, what do you mean by on time? You know, if you go into school, you know, you just fill it out. But people have to understand, all colleges have to adhere to deadlines for their institution and for the federal government. And then also, let me add this snippet here, with the federal government and this economic crisis that we're constantly facing, a lot of funds that students were used to getting from the government may not be available over the next few years. So that's why what I'm doing is so important is to encourage kids when they're in their 10th grade year, 11th grade year, really focus on your academics because that academics may be how you're able to literally get through college with little to no debt, okay? Um, let me throw out a very jarring statistic, and I'm really not a statistic person, but most African-American students leave college, and what I mean by most, 86.2% of Af African-American students leave college borrowing money. And that doesn't necessarily mean they actually leave with the degree. We're just saying they're leaving bar in that much debt, 86%, compared to non-black college students, only 52%. So that means half of the population who are not black actually have to borrow money to go to school. That's a very jarring, almost a, a two to one difference of when it comes to actual debt. And a lot of, some, a lot of people ask me this, well, why, 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 why did you even do this business? At the end of the day, I wanted to do something about closing that economic gap. And this is, I'm not, I never said that this is a, a sure all answer for all our problems, but it does help close the gap, especially for working 
mom and dad who make over a certain income and who don't qualify for certain types of government help. Scholarships have been what has helped them borrow less money. Okay, so let's kind of get into the types of financial aid. One way of paying for college is called federal work study. Okay, so this is a work program that you literally can have a part time job on campus to help you pay for your tuition, books, fees, whatever you need, and even, even some of your personal expenses that's associated with going to school. But again, if you don't fill out your FAFSA in time, because it's kind of like first come, first serve, if you don't get it filled out and the information is fed to the different colleges you apply for, how do they know that this is what you need? So you have to check that box. We've had to go back in and fix a lot of student stuff to try to make them eligible. But again, if, if, the, if that school has already filled their quota, there may not be enough jobs because it's a limited amount of jobs that they have. Okay? So again, okay. second form of financial aid are grants. And everybody pretty much has had, heard of the Pell Grants. This, this is money that comes from the federal government that you do not pay back. This is what they call free money. Here's, a, here's the other notion. But are all students eligible for it? No. If your parents make over a certain amount of money, you are not eligible for Pell Grants. Okay? And so there are all other grants that depends on what state that you live in that you may be eligible for. So when you hear the word grant, again, those are monies that comes from the government, whether it's state or federal, that does not have to be paid, okay? And the Pell uh, Grant limit <clears throat> is a little over $7,000, and what schools basically do is take that little seven, if you're eligible for that much, they take that amount and they divide it over your two academic semesters, okay? So depending on the cost of your school, you know, that may be enough money, it may not be enough money. So it all depends on what you're eligible for, okay? And then the third form of financial aid is called loans, okay? So there can be federal loans, that the student is eligible for. And then there are private loans that you also can borrow as well. Those are credit based, okay? Two types of federal loans. There are uh, subsidized loans, which is the government pays the entrance of those loans while you're in school. And then the other types are unsubsidized loans. You mean you are responsible for that entrance while you're in school. That's the difference between those two loans. Subsidized, government pays that entrance. Unsubsidized, you, that's why I started with a you. You are responsible for the entrance while you're in school, okay? And then the last final step of financial, of, of financial aid, forms of financial aid, are scholarships. That is the heart of what most people, when they, hire me to work for them. Those are the services that they're paying for is for our business to help them apply, search and apply for scholarships, okay? And the, and the basis in the um, for scholarships is basically GPA, um, letters of recommendation, um, Said, okay, GPA, letters of recommendation, um, community service hours or volunteer hours, and the basis is the essay. Okay, so those are the main components of a scholarship. And all scholarships don't go to just the kid who has a 4.0. We've helped students who have a lower GPA receive scholarships, but they had a lot of community service hours. Okay, so 
That is the basis of how we help students secure the bag. Okay? All right, so uh, we will talk to you next time. Uh, this is an opportunity for anybody if they have any questions. I'm going to leave a few minutes to kind of open that up. And if not, I will see you again on part two. We'll go Thanks. a little further into the bag. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, before we leave, though, I want, I want you to um, tell us how can we get in contact and how can students and parents get in contact with you um, to, to inquire about your service on how to secure the bag to school? Okay. All right. So you can um, reach me. I have a Facebook page. Uh, it's 3L Education Consulting. Uh, the name of the business is 3L Educational Consulting, LLC. Uh, we can be reached at 229-291-5458. Again, the uh, email address is 3LPrepConsulting at gmail.com. Yeah, gmail uh, uh, again, you can reach me through those means. We're not on uh, any other social media besides Facebook. Uh, again, because, again, my full-time job, I am an educator. And uh, like I said, we've uh, done a lot of workshops, and uh, we're available. Our prices are very, very affordable, and we work with parents. And uh, like I said, this is a great opportunity, and just do your best as students. And even during the summer, constantly work on what you need to be aware of. I know it's a little difficult in the pandemic, but it is possible to constantly work on yourself. Any further questions? Thank you, Ms. Larkin. I think that's it. Um, and as she said, we want you guys to really, really stay tuned because we're going to have a part two where she's going to get deeper inside the bag, as she says, to, um, to, 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 in, to educate students and parents alike on how to uh, secure that finance, how to secure those finances to, to, uh, to, go, to, to go to secondary uh, colleges. And so, um, so we thank you. Thank you. You have a great day and we appreciate you joining the Boys and Girls Clubs of Mitchell County Career College Fair. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too.